Thank you so much, Mixology, for having me. I'm humbled and honored to be able to speak to you guys. Manas and respect. Thing that matters in Jamaica. Nothing matters more than respect because it is the most important part of our culture. We don't have money, we don't have a way to floss on you. There's no car, no, no chain, no rings that can match the value of respect. It, it trumps all other things. <laughs> In America, if a popular hip hop artist, a Drake, a Future, put out an EP or an album, everybody will go get it. It's like an automatic win almost, you know. Dancehall doesn't have that automatic win. There's nothing in dancehall that's for sure. <laughs> dancehall is the most unfor sure business. And these sound men in Jamaica, them are the real boss because they have navigated this thing. You know, where you can't just bad them up to play music. You can't just throw money on the turntable to play music. You can't just hand me a USB and think I'm gonna play it. I need to see your face every single week. I need to know that you are supporting what I'm doing. And that's why you see Beanie Man and Bone Tikilan. They're gonna be the reigning gods of this music for forever because they go out six nights a week to three parties a night. They support Dancehall. And that's why you see Dancehall support them. Because Dancehall looks at them and goes, your bounty killer is in this party. Not only is he a legend, he's physically there. He's not like some guy that put out a song and then went back into his cave. Nah, man, he's in the streets. And when the selector plays a bounty killer song, you know it's going to get a response. Jamaica is no different than any other post-colonial slave country with its own issues on race, its own self-hate. Historically, the government of Jamaica has always been like, yo, listen, this reggae stuff, do, do, no. They don't want the world to see this when they think of Jamaica. So Jamaica has not promoted its own music, its ganja, so many things that would help Jamaica. And that's because those things have always been looked down on as the street people thing, ghetto people something. Black people's music. That suppression of reggae music has still trickled to this very day. Are we still a win? Whoa, are we still a win? We still a win, we still a win. Are we still a win? Them girls keep the black thing shining. We still a win. Are we still a win? And roll it in. We still a win. That is why you know it's for sports. Because one man has taken it upon himself to train his whole life to do something that the entire world loves to participate in. They love to watch it. There's an Olympic Games, it's the biggest thing in the world. So you have something like track and the world goes, man, these Jamaicans are fast. If they only knew how much talent we had on that fucking island in every single aspect that you could think of. But there's no Olympics for graphic designers. You know, there's no Olympics for Ableton. You know what I'm saying? But we got some of the best people that are doing these things. Do you realize in Jamaica we still don't have a Reggae Hall of Fame? Is that not stupid? That Jamaica does not have a Reggae Hall of Fame. A Hall of Fame for its mega stars. No Dennis Brown, no Gregory Isaacs, no Toots and the Maytales, none of that. No place that all of the historically unbelievable artists that have done reggae music. They don't have a place that a person from outside the world could come into Jamaica and go and learn and see and be like, yo, I didn't know that. And you say, yeah, you know all those samples that you hear in hip hop or in EDM? This is where it came from. King Jammies, Blam Blam, Boom Bam. There's no place. And that's because Jamaica has not recognized the self-hate has just been trickling from slave days. We still haven't overcome putting a certain color face 
in front of a product and watching it sell. You know, and we, we, we can all be very, very blunt and very candid that that's just the way it is and has been. And as much as we are hoping it begins to move out of that direction, it just, it just, it just hasn't yet. Reggae music has had lots of people that are awesome. They make great music who are not Caribbean and not African. And to be honest with you, a lot of the times, those people have been way more successful at reggae music. But we still haven't gotten to the point where um, the world would hear that same great music and accept it or feel comfortable if it was a, an all African band. But when I was growing up in the 90s, it was gunman song, gunman lyrics. Right now, you have this group of people now who have taken it up upon themselves to not just maybe research and educate themselves, but then put it in music and educate other people. And that's what I think is the difference between what might have been happening 10, 15, 20 years ago. But slowly and surely with this new movement, they call it reggae revival, whatever you want to call it, they come with a whole other set of people that orbit them. They come with graphic artists, they come with videographers, they come with people who have also been talented but submerged. And that is going to begin to grow and you're going to see more creatives, you're going to see more talent, and you're going to see it begin to just fucking blast out of Jamaica. And that, my friend, is something I want to be a part of. And how I ended up being on Major Lazer was because Diplo was a fan of Black China. And so he knew everything about Black China. He knew about the remixes. He knew about all the stuff we was doing. And he was like, yo, I love what you guys are doing. The hip hop and the reggae remixes. No one's fucking with y'all right now. It's, it's dope. So we just stayed in contact. And I want to say then five years ago, his MC at the time turned Christian. So he calls me and goes, yo, I got some shows. Now, mind you, I'm thinking this is going to be like two, three shows. Nothing crazy. He's going to find another MC. I'll be back on Black China. No big deal. So the very first show I ever did with Major Lazer was here in San Francisco at Ruby Sky. And that place was bananas. That shit was high fee, going dumb, fizz facing. What's my favorite word all night long? It was fucking awesome. And that's how it happened. And that's why I'm here now. I look at where I am right now with Major Lazer and the ears and the eyes that I have that I can use this moment to bring attention to all of the good that these artists are doing. There's just so much that we need to do right now. If anything, I just want to give my best, man. I just really want to do my best. Every single day, I want to do my best. You know, I want to help my island. I want to help my region. I want to help my city of Miami. I want to help all the reggae artists. I want to help all the compa artists. I want to help all the salsa artists. I want to help everybody in Afrobeats. I want to help everybody. Like, I just want to build bridges through communication and that communication is called music. Like I always say, making the world smaller by making the party bigger. All right then, listen to the words like a back of peace and take note of my style and pattern with me blend. Not for them I eat then, not for them I see then. But me not free them, cause I'm a living color normally. Scientists them want to study me in. Anybody lazy for your side? Anybody we know want to turn up? No laziness, we know want no laziness. No laziness, we know want no laziness. No laziness, we know want no laziness. No laziness, we know want no laziness.